morning, everyone. I am Deaconess Elizabeth, and it is Friday, September 18th. And I'm here again with your daily devotion. Um, today we will be starting a new book in the Bible. We will be starting the book of 1 Timothy. So if you'd like to follow along, you may turn there. We'll be in 1 Timothy chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by command of God our Savior and of Christ Jesus our hope, to Timothy, my true child in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. As I urged you when I was going to Macedonia, remain at Ephesus so that you may charge certain persons not to teach any different doctrine, nor to devote themselves to myths and endless genealogies, which promote speculations rather than stewardship from God that is by faith. The aim of our charge is love that issues from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. Certain persons, by swerving from these, have wandered away into vain discussion, desiring to be teachers of the law without understanding either what they are saying or the things about which they make confident assertions. Now, we know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully, understanding this, that the law is not laid down for the just, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and sinners, for the unholy and profane, for those who strike their fathers and mothers, for murderers, the sexually immoral, men who practice homosexuality, enslavers, liars, perjurers, and whatever else is contrary to sound doctrine, in accordance with the gospel of the glory of the blessed God, with which I have been entrusted. I thank him who has given me strength, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he judged me faithful, appointing me to his service. Though formerly I was a blasphemer, persecutor, and insolent opponent. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But I received mercy for this reason, that in me, as the foremost... Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example to those who were to believe in him for eternal life. To the king of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. This charge I entrust to you, Timothy, my child, in accordance with the prophecies previously made about you, that by them you may wage the good warfare, holding faith and a good conscience. By rejecting this, some have made shipwreck of their faith, among whom are Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have handed over to Satan, be, that they may learn not to blaspheme. All right, so here we have um, an introduction of Paul. He's writing to Timothy, who is uh, in Ephesus, and he's, he's telling him that to, to stay there in order to make sure that people are not teaching different doctrines there. So Timothy's kind of um, overseeing that, and he's kind of watching for that. Um, he's to make sure that they keep preaching sound doctrine, um, as there are some who are becoming teachers of the law, or wanting to become teachers of the law. Um, and now, Paul reminds us here in these chapters that the law is good, if properly used, because it is given to us by God, um, and it leads us to repentance, and it shows us our need for our Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, so here you, you see a little bit of the distinction between law and gospel and how important it is to have faithful pastors uh, to distinguish between the law and the gospel and that the law cannot save us. Because um, we, know, we know that Christ came to save sinners, as Paul says, that he is of the foremost. He's, um, he was formerly a blasphemer and he was um, the sinner among sinners and everything. But uh, we know that we cannot save ourselves no matter how closely we try and keep the law. And it is only because Christ kept that law for us perfectly that he won for us salvation and eternal life. So, um, today we will be singing hymn 579, The Law of God is Good and Wise. And we'll do verses 1, 5, and 6. The law of God is good and wise, and sets his will before our eyes, shows us the way of righteousness, and droops to death when we transgress. The Holiness condemns us all. 
Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, I want to thank you again for joining me for our daily devotions this uh, Friday morning. So we have a few things coming up this weekend. Uh, tomorrow we have Women's Coffee Hour at 9 a.m. And we will be having Sprouts at 1 o'clock. So for, uh, if you have some younger children who would like to come for a short Bible story activity and a snack, we'll be having that in the youth room tomorrow at 1. Um, and then Sunday we will be having our rally day. Uh, it was postponed from last weekend, so uh, here we will be having it. Um, we'll have a balloon release around 10 o'clock. Uh, we will not be having a cake, but we'll have a little something for the kids um, after the service uh, to celebrate as well. And then just looking a little bit further ahead, we do have Women's Bible Study on Monday. If you're looking to join us, we will be starting our uh, discussion and our study of Sarah, um, the second second woman that we're studying in our in our women's bible study so i hope to, to see you all very soon and i pray you all have a blessed friday